Ooh, success. Da 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 da. Dum dum dum. Success. I am live. Took me a while to get this one started today. So today we're going to be talking about phrases that come from TV. Okay. So this could be a bit interesting. I found a nice website with some information. And um, we're going to talk about it. And I'm going to give you the information what how it came to be used in the English language. So if you didn't know, English is high heavily influenced. Yo, nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining. Um TV and music and just general pop culture is a heavy influencer of the language. So, for example, uh, we learn a lot of things from just just general general speech used by celebrities, and often new words are coined. What, that's a really interesting phrase, actually. Let's put that one down. The word "coined" there. New words slash phrases are coined they're basically made or or made is probably the wrong one but made popular made popular by celebrities when they're on tv or through music it happens a lot in music coined yeah made popular so i'm going to go through through a few of them today and let's see what we can learn okay so hopefully there's some interesting things here this can be interesting for me because this is kind of new to me as well. Um, and I'm just interested to see what we can find and and how we can. Hi, Amina, nice to see you. Hi, guys, it's great to see you here. We can see like how it's evolved, language has evolved, even through something as simple as the television and how technology has really had a big influence. And maybe next week we can lead this into a uh, conversation about technology on um, how technology has influenced the language as well. Sorry, I'm just a bit out of sync. I thought the live wasn't going to work. So I kind of assumed that we wouldn't be going live today on, on, on YouTube because it wasn't allowing me to it for a minute. But we fixed it. So let's move forward. First question is, how much TV do you watch? How much TV do you watch? Tell me in the comments. Be honest with me here, okay? How much TV do you watch? It's a bit bright that out of the light. The middle one's good. How much TV do you watch? I'm not that white. I'm not like a ghost. So, yeah, how much TV do you watch? There's no earthquake here. It's just I've moved my table. I'd love to know. I literally watch zero TV until, until the last few days. But it's not really TV, so that's really interesting. So I'm not going to say I watch TV. I'm going to say I streamed online instead. So how much TV or how much do you stream? How much TV do you stream or uh, how many TV series? We say TV series, but maybe that needs to change because of how we consume television now. A series now, how we consume a series now. Maybe we don't use TV in front of it. But yeah, how much do you watch? Be honest with me, yeah. I'd love to know. Like I said, I literally watch zero. Weekly, once, only an hour. Ooh, that's interesting. Just an hour. That's great. That means you're productive the rest of your time. Or do you prefer to do, is there anything else that takes up your time? I like to watch things on YouTube to do with history. English history sounds so boring. I used to hate history when I was a kid, but recently I've been fascinated by it, especially associated to English. I used to watch 10 hours a day before I got a phone. Now it's, now it's 10 hours a day on the phone instead. <laughs> that's awesome. As long as you enjoy it, that's the most important thing. TV show does mean series, yeah. Maybe I'm out of the loop with the word series, but I've always called it TV, TV show or TV series. Your streams take my time. <laughs> but I, yeah, maybe you're learning something. 
fingers crossed, yeah. <laughs> so it's okay, man. So yeah. So but the last three days I've spent six hours a day watching TV because I found a TV series I really enjoyed. That's really rare for me. So let's go into the first word, which is maybe an interesting one. Certainly it's from my childhood. Poindexter. Poindexter. What do you think this means? So we're going to, I'm going to give you a little history as well. I'll tell you where these have been coined from, where they have been made popular from. What's Poindexter mean? I you say addictive? What does Poindexter mean? Do you know? And this is one that probably is outdated now. Well, I will say that, but it was used a lot in the past. What do you think it means? Still singing that one song. Poindexter. So it's something that's used as an insult towards someone. What do you think it could mean? Basically, it means nerd. I suppose nerd is used more nowadays. Or geek. Geek is, I, I'm used to, when I was younger, geek was the word, but nerd, geek. Ah, in, in, in British English, we use the word boffin, actually. Boffin, what a great word. Boffin. So Poindexter is referring to someone who is very studious. Boffin, nerd, geek, all the same. Poindexter, all the same word. Not the same word, but they mean the same thing. Thandar's not a nerd. You heard it here first, guys. You heard it here first. That's good. But I think you are, because you're studying English all the time, Thandar, so maybe you are, but not in the traditional sense, maybe. But yeah, I think uh, you Poindexter is probably used less. It was used in The Simpsons. Bart Simpson uses it as well. But yeah, I think we use nerd or geek more often now, don't we? Okay. Yeah, no worries. Not stupid. It means very clever, like a studious person, someone who studies a lot. Like it's an insult used at school mainly. And then... I'd love to know from you guys, um, do you think watching TV is productive? What do you think? Do you think watching TV is productive? Is it worth doing? Is it worth to watch lots of TV? I'm just going to send a message to my group for one sec. What do you think? There we go. Do you think watching TV is productive? Hmm. For me, for me, it wasn't personally. I, there's lots of those kind of things that I used to do that was very unproductive, like playing computer games or um, watching. I wouldn't say watching TV. My real killer was. Definitely computer games or watching things I enjoyed over and over again. That's one of my demons for sure. Like when I enjoy something, I want to watch it again. It's productive for me when I watch news in English. That's great. Hi, Gene. Gene. Depends on how often we watch TV. That's a great point. That is a big factor. Indeed, I do agree. But for me, uh, I, th I found that I'd watched the same programs that I used to enjoy. And uh, I'm glad to say that I begin to stop because now I can spend time making content for you guys, which is more important. And then watching, I'm more, what I'm watching things um, on YouTube that build my education a bit more around English. So I think that's important. Hello, teacher. I don't think so. I, th I think it's a waste of time, especially news and novels. Oh, interesting. You said novels as well. So uh, are you a, not a keen reader? I'm not a great 
relatively keen reader, but recently I've started reading a bit more when it's come to something that I've enjoyed, you know. Enjoyment's important. Enjoyment's always important, whatever we do. Mm -hmm. That's right. Nice comments, guys. So let's get the next one up. Maybe you know this one. Eye candy. What do you think eye candy means? Mm -hmm. I think TV can be relaxing. And that's the way I think about it. Like I've worked super hard the last six months. I haven't really spent any time on my own for my own thing. So the last three days where I spend time watching this one TV series is has been just like it feels like a reward in a sense like after doing so much i feel like really pumped like uh i felt really relaxed at the end of the time now the key thing is if you use it in that kind of way you have to find a way back as well don't you you have to go back to your routine you can't just stay in that that zone whilst it's fun you can't stay there it's just like eating eating a lot of mcdonald's eating a mcdonald's one day and then eating it the next day because you enjoyed it the previous day you know it's going to kill your diet or kill your kill your body a bit so you have to kind of take it into consideration didn't you let's see what we got in the comments we got attractive something you like to watch or something that is attractive candy is sweet so it must be something good <laughs> that's a good point so eye candy eye candy is definitely to do with someone who is attractive you would say that if you saw someone um who you thought was handsome or beautiful you might say that they are eye candy yes so it's usually referred to someone who is attractive and it used to be used a lot on tv but i think people were starting to come away from these kind of terms just in general because it's seen as rude so just be careful when you're using it but you might hear it so yeah something to think about okay so the next one 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 expression apparently that comes from tv is this this is kind of an interesting one it is just for people or things too. I've only heard it in the context of people, but let's check that out. It can be used for things, apparently, but I've never heard it used for thing. I've only heard it used for people. But let's see when it was used on TV, which is the important part. It may have developed over time or, or should I say evolved. And first heard in, it's the first time it was in the dictionary or it was referred to in the dictionary of 1978. So I think that, yeah, it could have evolved over time. I think watching TV shows live streams is extremely useful. I appreciate that, buddy. Thank you for the comment. Yeah. A sight for sore eyes is the opposite. So a sight for sore eyes is, is something that you don't want to see, whereas eye candy is something you do want to see. Um, so this is, look, a very simple phrase we're going to get here, but apparently it comes from TV. Probably one you've used at some point. Sorry about that. Sorry for that thing happening. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Something happened in the past. Oh, sorry about that. Apparently that is from TV, which is really fascinating to me. That, that is from TV. Crazy. Yeah, it's just apologizing. That's it. But it's a really natural phrase. So when I saw that come up on the list, that's a big shock. So that's really fascinating. And let's see when it was first used. It was first used in the 1960s. It was like a catchphrase. That's interesting, isn't it? In the 1960s, it was used as a catchphrase. Uh, but or you might say sorry for that or sorry for doing that or something like there's some evolution of it but 
that's interesting, isn't it? And what was used before? Just sorry. And then what usually happens in these kind of situations where it gets popularized by, well, social media now, yeah? Social media does it a lot. But if we're talking about TV, which is what we're doing today, what usually happens is um, these things are probably somewhere in the language already and they're, they're becoming more popular and it hits TV. Someone's using a regional dialect, for example, and then it kicks off everywhere. It appears everywhere. Everyone's using it. Funny, i tell you something funny, actually. My sister came to visit me here last two years ago, two years ago for the Rugby World Cup. And I said, and she was like, and we were talking about going to one of the games, ridiculously expensive. Luckily, I didn't have to pay for it. But um, we were talking about going to one of the games and she was like, come on, I don't want to um, lose our place. You know, we paid a lot for the tickets. So I said, yeah, OK, come on and let's crack on. Crack on. I used that a lot. My, and they were laughing at me. They were like, what's that? I never heard that before. And I said, crack on. It's used loads of time. In people in England always use it. And they're like, we've never heard about it. They live in like a, uh, you could say, not upper class, but uh, a really wealthy area, I would say would be the best way to put it, a wealthier area. And from uh, southern, the middle of southern England, and so I can see that that wouldn't be used so often because of the dialect and the way people use the language there. But between me and my friends, it's really informal, really. Uh, but you, most informal things become used in everyday life, like LOL, etc. But, yeah, as soon as they went home, though, they heard people using it all the time. So they just didn't notice it. So that's that for me, when they said that is amazingly interesting, that means that they were listening and understanding it, but not paying attention to what was being said. And that just shows that native speakers do that a lot. And we learn through the situation, not necessarily the uh, any, the other parts, you know. So it's really fascinating. Hi, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, sorry, I was talking for a long time there. Let's go to the next thing. I'm going to give you another phrase as um, I spoke for a long time then. So how oh, I just... Oh, what a fool. I just went off of it. What a fool. Uh, so I'd love to know while we're waiting for that. Uh, what's your favorite genre? What's your favorite genre? Of TV show. For me, it's comedy usually. Comedy, or I quite like dramas actually. So I have no problem with saying that. What's your favourite genre? Maybe we'll do some TV phrasal verbs now. Something you'll probably hear more from. Detectives and thrillers, romantic, fantasy. These are all great choices. Comedy is June and Ryan. You're trying to say I'm not funny. What are you doing? <laughs> Joking. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I like all kinds of genres. Good choice. I am romantic. Oh, thank you very much. I should have a red rose here. Yeah. Uh, reality shows, thriller and mystery. Good choices here, guys. I like it. I don't see how that's even related to TV. How about an idiom? Got to pick an idiom or two. Bear me a sec. Having a bit of a malfunction here. I didn't have enough time to really get anything set up today, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Uh, reality shows. Reality shows are a good choice. Thriller and mystery is popular, except horror. Yeah, I hate horror, personally. Interesting choices. How about documentaries as well? I think documentaries are interesting, aren't they? Okay, so here's some things that you might hear. What is a feature film? Good choice. Oh, that's film, really, but never mind. What is a feature film? Do you know? A feature film. This is used quite a lot, especially when new films come out. 
Eleanor Holmes. I haven't, but I have seen it advertised. I was thinking about going to watch it actually. Future. No. It's actually much simpler than it sounds. Opposite the documentary. Nope. A feature film is just a film that is longer than 90 minutes. Very, very simple one. Anyway, let's try and get as many new things as we can in a cyborg. Let's see what the next thing is. If someone said to you, the show must go on, this is a good one, what does it mean? The show must go on. The show must go on. The Queen song. The show must go on. Da 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 What do you think? The show must go on. What does it mean? It kind of actually for an idiom, this is kind of self explanatory a bit. It means that things should keep happening on its usual pace. Oh, interesting definition, Milan. I like that. It's good. This is good. Keep it going, guys. The show must go on. Don't make me sing like this all the time, though. It's not my best. Continue. It is related to continue. You got it. The show must go on means the show must continue even if there are distractions or problems. Okay? So even if there's an issue. Uh, there we go. Regardless of what happens. Perfect, madame. Regardless of what happens, things should keep on going. Very good. You got it spot on. Okay, so what does it mean then to run the show? Actually, this, is a, this could be linked to... Uh, are we going to fire through... Crack on with, nice. I like you using crack on. It kind of, yeah, to continue using it, yeah. Uh, what do you think to run the show? This can be used in general, like at work or something as well. So. Uh, so, what do you think? It doesn't have to just relate to TV. So, for example, quite often on the football pitch, Cristiano Ronaldo runs the show. Or at Virgin, Richard Branson runs the show. I'm trying to think of things that many people know. Okay. Steve Jobs used to run the show at Apple. Gary Vaynerchuk runs the show at VaynerMedia. In the in the in the late nineties, early two thousands, Arnold Schwarzenegger was running the show in Hollywood. It means to be in charge of something, but we can use it to mean that they they are like the main focus, or they are the they're at the peak of that industry you could use it for as well. So that one's really useful. That gets used in so many contexts. I appreciate your comment, Hang Ho, about my hair. I was a bit lazy today, actually. What does it mean to be a showstopper? Well, we're going to finish in two minutes. What does it mean to be a showstopper? If you're a showstopper, what do you think that means, guys? I'd love to know. I think this is better, isn't it? We, should, we could just fire through a bunch of vocabulary and I'd give you some um examples Cristiano Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo is a showstopper um, or Arnold Schwarzenegger put on a showstopping performance in Terminator 
What do you think it means? Or um, Stu Sensei's live on Instagram. He was uh, was a showstopper. Well, that's not so great, but yeah, not a host. Um, but nice try. Prominent ones. It just means some an event that was exceptionally good. This usually means like the peak of the whole event. So one moment or one thing that happens within something. You could say it for if you watch a live performance of music, you could say like a certain band or a song was the showstopper. So the point of the show that was the peak, an important event in the show. I'll give you a proper definition though. I wouldn't mind. An event that provokes strong emotion or reaction. Uh, uh, and creates a pause, pause in proceedings. Okay, there you go. Like something that grabs people's attention. And then the last one I'm going to say is to steal the show. Well, this is the show, apparently. To steal the show. What does to steal the show mean? This is going to be the last one for today. To steal the show. What do you think it means? Do you think I'm stealing the show right now? I don't like the definitions on this, so I'm going to adjust them. They're okay, but they could be more clear. So you're getting a personalized touch. To steal the show. So again, these are all relatively similar. It means to be the focus of a show by by doing a, an incredible performance, for sure. That's great, my lad. Nice, um, nice definition. I like that. Can you give me any examples? Who steals the show are the things that you enjoy? So I like football. So for me, at the minute, Liverpool are running the show. And... Probably Sadio Mark. No, what's his name? Uh, Mohamed Salah is stealing the show. He is the peak performer in Liverpool's team. He has been for the last three seasons, anyway. Others have been good as well. Mane's been great. Van Dijk, goalkeeper. What's his name? Can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, what else do I like? So I would say that. I can only give examples from football. Uh, no, how about um, you could say it for, for cricket? Yeah, go for it. So in for me in the two thousands, Kevin Peterson was stealing the show. He was very good. Or Freddie Flintoff. Freddie Flintoff, when he was really on form, was stealing the show. Indian cricketers. I can't remember the names. It's my only issue. What's he called? M something. Ro, Ro, I can't remember his name. There's one guy who's really good that I remember. I really remember. But my knowledge of cricket is in, in, of international cricket is not so great. I'm going to have to find out his name now. That's really irritating. Maybe not the India. Yes, there you go. MS Dhoni, you got it. Fantastic job. He was great. When I watched a few, a few, before I left England, I watched a lot of cricket because I played a lot of cricket back then. And I thought MS Dhoni was stealing the show, like a very consistent performer. Uh, not like out of this world, but he was very good whenever I watched so, yeah, I liked his play a lot. You have seen Yuvraj Singh stole the show by hitting six sixes on six balls to show abroad. <laughs> oh, don't say that. In my class, I was a person who stole the show by performing such an interesting presentation. That's good. Nice job. That's a nice, um, nice definition. So, is he still playing? 
I always thought he was quite old, but I don't remember. I tell you who does steal the show whenever I watch him, that guy who does the bowling action where he throws it from the side. I never remember his name as well. I oh, know why. So you can watch it back. I was only there for about half an hour. Thank you for trying to join them. Retired. Yeah, I thought so. I remember when I was, I watched that five years ago, and I think that he he was coming to the end of his time then. Malinga, that's the guy. Yes, Malinga. What a great player he is. I always think he's very interesting to watch. There's many fascinating uh, cricketers out there. I think Australia were stealing the show for a long period until they had that big fallout about five years ago, four years ago. And uh, so there's been so many great, like New Zealand were really up and coming. There's a nice phrase for you if you're talking about sport. Some, or uh, You can talk about in many contexts, up and coming, someone who's becoming good at something there they are doing, beginning to like improve. His hair stole the show. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't know if he was consistent. I just enjoyed watching him. So for me, he stole the show, Malinga, because of his style. It doesn't mean he was consistent. Uh, but I kind of, I used to be a better fielder than anything else, to be honest. So I like seeing amazing catches and usually Flintoff or Peterson was pretty good for England. Uh, who's the Bell? Ian Bell? He was good. Yeah, of course. It's because you haven't listened to me enough. That's all, Louisa. Daniel Vittori, Brandon McCullen. Yeah, exactly. There's some great performers out there in the world. Ian Bell was a beast. Oh, Alistair Cook, yeah. You're, getting, you're making me remember all of these names now. They're beginning to come to me. I really like the... Uh, what do they call it? 2020. I like. I used to love watching that towards the end of my time. Flintoff is a legendary fielder for sure. I haven't talked about cricket for ages, <laughs> but 2020 is always fun, especially if they actually attack. I saw a couple of games where people weren't doing what they should be doing, which is just hitting for sixes. But I know obviously that's not the aim, but some people were really defensive when I was watching it. Anyway, I said, don't worry, you just haven't listened for long enough, that's all, buddy. The longer you spend listening, the more you understand when you hear a new accent. I haven't, man, I haven't watched it enough in the last, since I moved to Japan, it, like soccer uh, and cricket has kind of passed me by. This last year, I got more into football again. I started to watch a lot more. Joe Root and Ben Stokes were really up and coming about five years ago. Stokes, I thought, was a really good all-rounder. Joe Root has sadly taken up his roles a lot better. Stokes had a few issues when he was up and coming, though. Don't you know about the England? No, mate, I haven't really. Johnny Bairstow's good. Uh, I haven't really watched it, like I said. I can't keep up to date with everything. You don't know what cricket is. It's like the gentleman's version of baseball. <laughs> it's not that. That's the best way I can put it because everyone says England's full of gentlemen, which is not true. Um, but I played, yeah, for a bit. I'm not very good, but I'm, I was a pretty good fielder. I can catch a ball for sure. But England... England have done relatively well in the last 10, 15 years, to be fair, with World Cups. They had a really torrid time when I was... Oh, really? The first time... Yeah, they've done relatively well, though. Ashes is really the thing that's more important to us because of the rivalry, I think. But we've done relatively well in World Cups. We haven't done terrible. New Zealand have been amazing, haven't they, recently? But, yeah, I think that um, they they always – just the classic England stuff, though, we always fail in the semifinals or the finals of stuff. We do it in every sport because the media gets too much, too much pressure on it. Um, but, yeah, 
we could we have usually have very good teams but great individuals but as a team they never usually do well in any sport I mean look the football world cup we did pretty well actually the last world cup in Russia I thought that was really good <laughs> I, I, I bet it is I don't know if it's the smallest smallest because I'm sure someone something that's not well known is smaller but as in professional probably but yeah it's a lot of pressure for relatively nothing to be honest uh but just bragging rights but i can't remember what the really there's a great piece of vocabulary to do with um to do with cricket it's involved like the banter between teams what the hell is that word it's great but it came to it came into light. That's what Australia got in trouble with. What's the word when when they also got in trouble with ball tampering at the time before they went down? But they they were like mocking the players. What's the word for that? Less popular than soccer, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely less popular than soccer. Second most popular sport in the world, cricket. Well, I suppose it could be. I mean, yeah, because American football really is just America-based. And um, basketball, I'm surprised it's higher than basketball. Is it called sledging? It could be sledging. I can't remember what it is, but it's a good piece of vocabulary to know. But I don't know if it's used outside of the context of that. Uh, oh, my autocorrect put, made a mess of this question. What do they call that? Sledging. It is sledging. Nice job. I don't know how popular ice hockey is. I know it's popular to an extent, and I know throughout the world there's different countries that are very good at it, but I don't know how to what level it's popular. Like football is really internationally renowned. Rugby's picking up a bit because of the World Cup. It's sledging, sledging. Uh, Robin was right. Uh, but I don't know what other sports really are there, apart from basketball is really like you see when, um, what do you call it? What's his name? The Black Mamba died. That really hit a lot of people. So that's super popular. There's professional wrestling count. <laughs> I think everyone knows The Rock these days, yeah? Uh, but yeah, sorry, guys. I'm kind of just just a conversation now, really, isn't it? Um, so field hockey is not so popular. It's like I'm on about mainstream popularity between many nations. And I know in Japan basketball and baseball are the most popular sports and in europe basketball is pretty popular volleyball's picked up recently as well isn't it so and women's football who is the most the highest paid sportsman is probably he used to be a golfer like tiger woods which wouldn't surprise me if it still is a golfer tennis is a good show uh, in 2020, the top was Roger Federer. That's interesting, isn't it? Roger Federer was the top one. Uh, Tiger Woods, I can't imagine being too close to the top of the list these days. But he did have a little renaissance recently, hasn't he? Federer, Ronaldo, Messi, Neymar. I'm surprised football players are in the top four, actually. Uh, number five, LeBron James, Stephen Curry, and Kevin Durant. So the next three are basketball players. And then Tiger Woods is there. But, you know, there's so many great sportsmen, men and women out there that don't get on the list, which is unfortunate. But Naomi Osaka is the highest paid female athlete in sports history. That's interesting, the, the Japanese tennis player, female Japanese tennis player. And there's two people I don't know, Kirk Cousins and Carson Wentz. I don't know either of those names. So they might be American football, I guess. Yeah, Kirk Cousins is American football. Or baseball. No, football. Carson Wentz. I guess it's got to be football, isn't it? Yeah, football. Both football. (laughs) 
Roger Federer, yeah. Football is popular in Myanmar. That's interesting. More than Messi. Yeah, Messi. Ronaldo, yeah, for sure, because he of all his sponsorship deals. I don't really see Messi in that many commercials in comparison to Ronaldo internationally. Like I see, I saw Ronaldo in a lot of TV commercials in England and um, and in, what do you call that? And in Japan. American sports are only famous in America. Baseball, you know, Japan is the number one country for baseball at the minute. I might have changed recently. That was like two years ago when I researched that fact. I know baseball is popular. I don't know. Maybe they're the best team. It might be Japan's got the best team for baseball. It was something like that anyway. Anyway, guys, sorry, I got to go. But well, thank you so much for this live. It was great to speak to you today. Nice to have a chat at the end. We should do more chatting. It's much easier for me. <laughs> That's okay. We can have a chat about makeup next time. Thunder, yeah? Or I don't know. That's super stereotypical for me to say that. We could talk about um, school subjects or whatever your passion is. Most important thing is whatever your passion is. See you on Hello. I will be there in approximately 0.1 second. No, no, not possible. But I will be there soon. Ciao. Arma.